This is part four. To kill yourself or not. This is a quote by Albert Camus. The only serious question in life is whether to kill yourself or not. Let's talk about this philosophy of Albert Camus for a moment here. This is a good quote here. There is no happiness even or there I should let me read let me let me read that again. <laughs> there is no happiness if the things we believe in are different than the things we do. Albert Camus was a French philosopher whom as a young man witnessed the German invasion of Paris in World War II and all of the subsequent post-war devastation, right? It shouldn't be any surprise that the post-war philosophies which emerged from Europe would have a rather pessimistic view of the world. I mean, think about it. You just see the Germans march into your city, or maybe you live, hell, maybe you live near a concentration camp somewhere, or maybe you saw, maybe your, maybe your house was destroyed and, you know, you just would see devastation all around you, right? Kind of hard to have an optimistic view of the world after seeing all of that devastation, right? So this is the case with um, the philosophy of nihilism. This is a, this is a post-war, uh, this is called a post-modern philosophy, which um, came about around the time of the, um, uh, right around the time of World War II. So nihilism asserts, this is a philosophy that asserts that life is without meaning, it's without purpose, and has no value at all, right? And this philosophy is alive and well today. Um, ironically, alive, get it. You know. This is a very dangerous idea, in my opinion. And, and, and you have to be very careful about what you take in within yourself and the messages that you're taking in from all kinds of different places, the news, television shows, movies, because if they're pushing this nihilism on you, it's not doing you any favors. It's gonna make you feel worse. So while Camus embraced the sentiment of meaninglessness in his writings, right? Because there is some truth to some of these dark aspects of philosophy. I would agree with that. But Camus, he boldly held up a candle in the darkness Despite the tragic devastation that was all around him, he rejected this idea of this ultimate kind of nothingness or this meaninglessness. He, he rejected that. Instead, Camus formed an alternative and subsequent philosophy, which is known as absurdism. This worldview asserted that human beings should embrace the absurd condition of their existence. Right? This is an honest and authentic way to be. Right? Our lives are absurd. This whole existence is absurd. Right? I can get on board with that. So embracing this absurd condition of your existence, but also defiantly exploring and searching for meaning. So acknowledging, hey, this is ridiculous, but I'm going to be a seeker here. I'm going to seek. I'm going to explore. I'm going to discover. I'm going to I'm going to learn as much as I can about this absurd world and have fun with it and laugh at it, right? Camus rejected suicide because it does not counter the absurd nature of existence. But rather, the act of killing oneself makes existence even more absurd. <laughs> so James meets Angela again and this time she appears to have lost the will to live she is laying on the floor and appears to be contemplating suicide she tells james you are the same as me this is the scene from blue velvet or this reminds me of the scene from blue velvet when dennis hopper is telling dennis hopper's character is telling kyle mclaughlin's character you are the same as me <laughs> So another reference to Blue Velvet here. Since we know whom Angela represents in respect to James, it is clear that James has contemplated killing himself. This is a distinct possibility for James as one of the endings 
of Silent Hill 2 indicates. James admits to Angela that he doesn't know why he is looking for his dead wife. Suddenly, Angela appears disturbed by what James is saying and gets up to leave. James' admission to Angela means his projection of her is weakening, right? He's starting to kind of wake up a little bit. And therefore, Angela must reject this if she is to survive. Angela has to get out of there. James offers to go with her, but Angela refuses, saying she will be okay by herself. Angela leaves the knife behind and takes James, uh, and James rather takes possession of it. James is beginning to openly scrutinize parts of himself which he previously rejected. In order to achieve the in water ending in the game, James must inspect the knife in his inventory at least once, in addition to, of course, being reckless and not healing himself and that kind of thing. James inspecting the knife in his inventory clearly represents the contemplation of suicide. In this room, James also obtains the prisoner coin, which represents Angela. He also needs to find the snake coin, which is in the baby carriage in the empty pool, and the old man coin, which he finds in the garbage chute by putting the juice box down the chute. So let's fast forward a little bit to room 105. This is where James finds the coin puzzle, and he uses the three coins that he's collected. After solving this puzzle, he is able to collect the Lynn House key. After unlocking the door to the stairwell, James happens upon another sexual encounter involving Pyramid Head and one of his ghoul friends, maybe? <laughs> this... Um, this look on James' face is uh, priceless, right? I mean, he's just like, he looks surprised, titillated, scared, and uh, maybe a little envious all at the same time, right? If a look could say anything, it's saying many things here. <laughs> so Pyramid Head's getting down with one of his lady friends. And James is kind of watching here. So instead of trying to hide or run away this time, James must fight Pyramid Head. This time James actively beats back his deepest repressions until they retreat. James doing battle with his shadow represents progress, especially because the shadow kind of sh shrinks back kind of goes away a little bit here. It's interesting that after Pyramid Head receives enough damage, he walks into the mysterious watery depths, which represent the emotions. Almost as if the shadow self has moved up from the deepest part of the unconscious into the conscious emotional state, where it can be processed at a higher level of understanding. After the battle, James must progress down the same set of stairs as his retreating shadow self. The path forward is always deeper into the unknown, right? And this is very symbolic of, you know, Pyramid Head going into this. He's going, first of all, he's descending these stairs that are filled with water, right? This is a, <laughs> you couldn't, I mean, this is, a, it's pretty clear what's happening here. And James, of course, has to follow. He has to follow this. He has to go deeper as well in order to have the ultimate confrontation with Pyramid Head. He has a lot, a lot of work to do yet. So remember the first time James saw Laura and he began to pursue her? It was Pyramid Head standing in the way. Now it appears that James has cleared the path to see Laura, although Laura will continue to challenge James. Shortly after his confrontation with Pyramid Head, James makes his way down a foggy street in Silent Hill and discovers Laura sitting on a wall. Laura clearly has an important message for James, and she tells him so quite directly. Right? She says, are you blind or something? You didn't love Mary anyway. She's trying to wake James up. At this point, 
James is not ready to explore what Laura is trying to tell him, right? He's making a little bit of progress. He's incrementally inching his way towards progress. And that's just how it goes, right? As Jung said, there's no coming to this higher self or conscious realization. There's no coming out of, there's no going through this journey without being challenged over and over, having, uh, going through struggle and pain. So every character is challenging him. Laura runs away again after James asks her about the letter because, of course, he isn't ready to listen. Her running off keeps James moving toward on uh, moving forward on his path, however. 